Hello， 大家好，我是悠悠。上一集呢，我们带大家去 x r e x 新加坡的新办公室去开箱，然后录了一集 Podcast。这一集我们直接出外景。<笑>这个地方是什么地方呢？这个地方是新加坡的 a n d a s Hotel。我在录影的现在呢是十月二号，就是每一年在新加坡举办的最重要的亚洲只关注在稳定币最大的一个峰会，叫 Stable Coin Summit。你们如果听我们前几集就知道，这个高峰会是由 x r e x 来主办的。今年呢比较特别的事情是，除了 x r e x 我们专注在稳定币的跨境支付之外呢，我们今年的 Co-host 是 Anchorage Digital。若是币圈或者是有关注稳定币发展的朋友，应该就知道他们是谁。就是在天才法案通过之后呢，全世界最大的稳定币发行商 Tether 就是和 Anchorage Digital 合作，发行了要在美国使用的稳定币，叫做 USAT。那 Anchorage Digital 就是他们的合作伙伴。所以今年呢，在 Stable Coin Summit 呢，你可以看到非常多的题目都是在讨论稳定币的呃监管，还有稳定币的应用，还有不同的稳定币的形式。未来我们正要引。像一个稳定币的大时代，十月二号呢，就是 Stable Coin Summit 的重要登场的日子。然后今天呢，我们开场当然是由 x r e x 集团的共同创办人暨集团执行长黄耀文 Win 来为大家开场。他在演讲内容里面呢，其实提及到了稳定币在整个。呃，过去几年它的严格还有发展，不只是这样子。其实，在天才法案通过之后呢，我们正迎向一个后天才法案的一个时代。到底后天才法案的时代会长什么样子？它又有什么样子的观察呢？所以在这一集呢，我们直接把 w a n 的开场的这个致辞，还有他开场的这一段演讲，直接剪进了我们的 Podcast。如果呢，你是呃只有在听 Podcast 没有影音的话，它会是纯英文的。可是呢，如果你需要中文的字幕来协助的话，欢迎到 x r e x 的 YouTube 频道，我们有帮大家做了一些字幕的辅助。然后呢，接下来我们就直接带大家到现场来听听看 w a n 他的演讲里面到底为我们看到了什么样子的稳定未来，还有他的洞察。Let's go. All right. Good morning. Um, thank you so much for making it. Can't believe you guys uh made it so in a such an early morning session. My name is Wayne. Uh, today, uh, I'll be talking about stablecoins as digital bear money,、uh, which I feel is stablecoins' core innovation and its full potential. Okay, so how we digitized money in the '90s? Once the internet demonstrated that we can send information in real time, and we have the freedom. To publish and access information, the money transfer industry started to imagine how we can digitize money, so that we can send money like how the internet sends data. But we didn't try to digitize paper bills. Okay, instead, we created closed loop money ledgers. With remittance and payment products like Venmo, Paytm, WeChat,、um, WeChat Pay, AliPay, and M-Pesa, we started to move money at internet speed. But as long as all users were on a single network or scheme, this digital money model breaks. When servicing a global user base, licensing, reporting, and audits per jurisdiction made universal onboarding very difficult, and the post 9/11 AML requirements made open an account a compliance challenge. So we ended up with disconnected. Closed-looped money networks that relied on correspondent banking to bridge value across each other, and we had a lot of Vostro and Nostro accounts. Why? Because money was some、um, permissioned 
private ledgers, um, and it was based on a trust model. So when it comes to global money transfers, we never really had a fast global network. So what if we didn't digitize money using closed-loop ledgers? What if we try to digitize paper bills? What's special about paper bills? Well, the paper bill is a bare instrument. Possession is finality, and verification is against the bill, okay? Not the holder. So in a bare, with a bare instrument, we don't care who the holder is. Anybody can hold it. We just care if that bill is genuine and has value. And whoever is in possession of that bill has the right to spend it and is the owner of it. So paper bills offer better financial sovereignty. Why? Anyone can hold it using any container, right? So if it's paper cash, if I have hands, I can hold it in my hands, hold it in my wallet. I can put them in safes. Regardless of my nationality, and regardless of jurisdiction, and no one needs an account. That is the financial sovereignty that paper bills can enable. So we asked, what's the best technology to digitize paper coupons and make it easy for people to access them, authenticate them, and detect counterfeits. What's the technology? Thank you. Yo, Sergio. Of course, it's the blockchain. So we created the first fast global money transfer network from, and we moved from disconnected, closed-looped network of database ledgers to tokenized cash on permissionless blockchains. With tokens that anyone can hold and send, and where no account issuance is required. When asked about the Genius Act, uh, Mr. Dong, he is currently the exec director of the Taiwanese Central Bank and also the chairman of Megabank, a major bank in Taiwan. He said, Taiwan had a similar payment product almost 20 years ago, and that attracted some scrutiny. But I really feel that there's a lot of truth in what he said because he referred to EasyCard, which was available since 2002, more than 20 years ago, as the digital top-up card for mass transportation payment. And because it needs to be servicing payments for mass transportation, think about buses, MRTs, and trains, the goal was inclusive access. So it was designed almost like a digital bearer instrument. Anyone, regardless of nationality, can use it. So it doesn't matter if you're from a sanctioned country. As long as you can get yourself in Taiwan and you've got paper cash, you can use that paper cash, go to a convenience store, and buy yourself an easy card. And with that easy card, you can pay anywhere, um, and, and you can pay with any mass transportation system in Taiwan. So no KYC no account issuance, and you top up with paper cash. Okay. It received the Electronic Stored Value Card uh, license in 2010. That's the ESCVC license in Taiwan, and this license, again, requires no KYC and no account issuance.
and expand it to become the most popular payment product in Taiwan. That's an easy card. Okay? And I think that's what uh, Mr. Dong meant when he said, oh, stable coins. Well, we had a similar regulatory regime more than 20 years ago in Taiwan. Similarly, stable coins are a financial inclusion booster because they enable access to currencies people need or prefer. In emerging markets, the world trade currency is the US dollar. Lots of people, businesses need access to the US dollar, and stable coins gave them that option. And today, people in emerging markets use them for both B2B cross border payments as well as for person to person retail remittances. Stable coins are becoming a better alternative to, to correspondent banking. Okay. Uh, they have become a more efficient means to move value between two financial institutions. And they significantly reduce pre-funding and in-transit capital. So now, we don't need all these nostril vulture accounts. Um, we, uh, the FIs are starting to use stable coins. But stable coins, they're not only a better settlement technology. Lots of people say, oh, it's a better settlement technology than SWIFT. They're not only that, because stable coins are becoming a form of digital bearer money, right? When you receive an MT103 telegram from SWIFT, that is not money itself. You have to go through correspondent banking to move that value. But when you receive stable coins, stable coins are by themselves digital bearer money. And so it's not only a payment, uh, sorry, a, a settlement technology. A stable coin achieves its ultimate potential when users start to believe it's money and not just a settlement instrument, and they stop settling back to fiat. They start to hold it and start to transact with it. Okay? When, you, when you receive a new stable coin, You'd say, well, you know, I'm not comfortable until I settle it back to dollar, until I have dollars in my bank account. Well, today, many stable coins are seen as money themselves. So we see stable coin, we say, great, it's settled. I'm going to hold it. I'm going to pay someone else with it. This belief needn't be in the issuer, but rather in the stable coin's secondary market liquidity. This is when a stablecoin truly takes on a life of its own. So we say liquidity is trust. And it's when stablecoins become money. So although we digitized money a long time ago, with stablecoins, we used permissionless blockchains to create digital bear money. And in my opinion, that is the core stablecoin innovation. Moving forward, I'd like to share two observation points uh, from me post the Genius Act. One, a lot of people come, a lot of uh, financial institutions, banks, Regulators come and ask us, uh, you know, about issuing new stablecoins, and especially about uh, local currency peg stablecoins, non-US dollar peg stablecoins. Uh, my opinion is there are only two stablecoin markets. Really, you have the US dollar stablecoin as one huge market and then the rest of the stablecoins, okay? So when thinking about the stablecoin business, really, we're looking at two very different markets, the US dollar stablecoin and the rest. 
because the U.S. dollar remains the dominant medium of exchange and unit of account. That's number one. And two, the issuer revenue can't be forever based on flow, right? So we've had long stretches of history where the short-term interest rates were close to zero. Now it's very high, yes, and issuers are getting great revenue. But throughout history, it wasn't like this. Also, in 2024, 91% of PayPal's revenue came from fees, not float. So what does this mean? Well, OK, so where are the, who, who's making the fees today if the issuers are making their revenue from floats? Uh, it's the blockchains, right? Masari uh, reports uh, past few quarters, wallet-to-wallet uh, -wallet transfers and stable coins account for more than 95, 98% of uh, transactions on Tron, for example. And Paolo also shared recently that amongst the nine blockchains, Ethereum, Tron, Ton, Solana, 40% uh, of fees are paid to send USDT. Okay, so today, the, the business model is such that issuers are making their revenue from float, while most of the fees goes to the blockchains. But if short-term rates won't stay elevated, and payments typically monetize via fees and not float, think about PayPal last year, would stablecoin issuers start to grow their affiliated blockchains to build a more robust revenue model in preparation that the revenue from floats may eventually decrease. Okay. So these are my two observations. And with that, there you have it. Stablecoins as digital bear money. That's stablecoins core innovation and their full potential. Thank you very much. <laughs> 相信大家听完 Wayne 的演讲之后呢，已经有一些些对过去的整理，还有对未来的一些期待。稳定币呢，因为科技巨头，还有呢大型的金融机构，他们都一起加入，再加上法规的完整之下呢，掀起了我们从来没有看过的一个热潮。我们所有人都在这一个历史当中 ，Stable Coin Summit 非常开心，可以成为这样子的一个平台。那除了 Wayne 的演讲之外呢，其实我们非常多精彩的这些花絮，还有演讲的内容。都有上传到 Stable Coin Summit 的这个 YouTube 频道。如果你对于相关的内容有兴趣，他们的相关讨论啊，一整天的 panel 有兴趣的话，请在我们节目下方的资讯栏可以看到相关的连接。那也欢迎大家给我们相关的意见，让我们一起参加这一场重要的稳定币全球运动吧。那如果你喜欢我们的节目，欢迎在帮我们多多分享，然后订阅，开启小铃铛。我们就下一次再见喽，拜拜。谢谢您收听 Web 3大西进。如果您喜欢我们的内容，欢迎追踪 X r e x Telegram、Instagram 以及 Facebook 中文社群，连接都在节目下方资讯。也欢迎追踪和订阅 Web 3大西进 Podcast， 不要错过任何精彩的对话。我们下集再见。